Mark Erickson, um, an orthopedic surgeon, pediatric orthopedic surgeon specializing in spinal deformities um, in children and young adults. I serve as the medical director of our spine center here at the Children's Hospital and co-chairman of the section of pediatric orthopedics. Many things have changed. Um, I think some of the key things are now we're gearing a lot of our efforts towards safety. We always have, but now a really strong focus. And we have monitoring that we have in the operating room that allows us the opportunity to, to keep a close check on the spinal cord status when we're doing these deformity surgeries, which is a huge advance. Um, and now we have more opportunities to use technology in this space to hopefully make it safer as well. One of my favorites uh, was, has been the development of our animation studios. Um, here at Children's Hospital Colorado. We have a medical media department now that has uh, four animators, and with their art artistry and animation skills, are able to create really anatomically correct models and animations that depict the, the deformities that we're taking care of in these small children and young adults. And that affords us the opportunity to then show them, educate the patients and families initially on what their deformity involves, the details behind it from a bone structure perspective. They also then can print these animated uh, models, these 3D models. The data that they acquire comes from CAT scans, which we get routinely on these very severe deformities. They're able to take the CAT scan data and print a 3D model that, that you can actually hold and take and use as a surgical example in the operating room. And they can make the animations out of it very anatomically correct. And every patient and family receives that differently. Some are very interested in holding the model and others would rather look at it on an animation. And so it allows us to bring that information and education to them. That's one layer. Another layer is educating residents and fellows and young surgeons how to become more accurate, more proficient, and more understanding of the complexities of the deformity have really taken off uh, with this technology. One of my uh, driving interests is trying to figure out how to make us do these surgeries in a safer fashion or as safe as possible. So the information that we have now with the 3D printed models and the animations is very accurate anatomically. What's now on the horizon and in the imminent future is we can now use robotics um, and um, navigation platforms. And the robotics and navigation platforms can be married. And guess what they use for their technology? the same CAT scan information that we use to create the animations in the 3D models. So that brings a really interesting opportunity to the table where we can now have a robot that can help us navigate on spinal deformity that's quite severe in, on smaller children by using anatomic landmarks uh, depicted from the CAT scan technology. So we can practice with the robot in the lab with the 3D printed model and teach and educate residents, fellows, young surgeons in the lab with a, a model that's been created out of plastic. We can also take that through the operating room and have the robot understand the anatomy of each individual patient that we're operating on, which the navigation system married to it, and take us to the places in the, in the spine where we need to put our implants and make it opportunity for us to put them in as safe as possible. And I think the number one value that I would say is it allows us to bring the value of safety uh, to the equation. I think we can make very good surgeons safer um, it's a myth to think that we can take surgeons that don't technically have the skills to do the surgery and have a robot afford them the skills. That's not going to work. What it can do is take surgeons that are very good and technically capable and make them safer. That, I would say, would be the number one value. There are some cost values that we think are going to come into the equation. Those have yet to be played out. The cost values would come from being able to plan the entire surgery, as far, including what screws will need, what lengths will need, what, how long the rods need to be before the surgery so then I can have less equipment needed to be uh, present during the surgery. That hasn't been worked out from a balanced perspective, uh, but I think the biggest quality that it brings to the equation is um, safety um, in spine surgery. The new era, new age surgeon, you know, grew up with iPhones and iPads in their pockets, and so they're very facile. The cool part about it from my standpoint as an educator is they bring lots of questions to the table, which makes us create a better product um, from an education perspective. And then I think the biggest thing I think that it allows us to do is we actually we can practice on models that are anatomically precise. 
that we can use to do, you know, practice the surgeries with the robots and the navigation systems. That's a huge jump and the feedback on that's been really high. I'm very uh, interested in expanding it further because we, we, we do complicated what we call osteotomies, which means we cut the bone and reshape the bone uh, throughout the skeleton. Uh, the pelvis, the lower extremities, upper extremities, arms, hands, etc., and the spine. So I'm very interested in seeing if we can help have robotics help in those anatomic areas. Well, it would make sense that it would because we use the same CT scan data to analyze those deformities and confront 3D models of those deformities as well. So we should be able to marry that technology and then have that allow us to create instruments that allow us to cut the bone as precise as possible right where we want it to be. That I think is going to be in the near future, the near future meaning the next five years. I would say the favorite parts of my job, which is one of the coolest jobs that I know, um, is a combination of the education and the patients and families. Um, the patients and families are what drives everything. That's what we're here for, to take care of this population of children and young adults that we have uh, in, in our area, not just for spine deformities, for the, the global things that children's that we do. And doing that in the context of teaching our new up and coming surgeons and doctors to do, to do that and have a passion for that education as well. Those are my two biggest areas. That, that's what drives me um, on a regular basis to create up uh, innovative ways to do education and to take care of patients in a safer fashion. Those are the two things I would say off the top of my head, but I could name you a lot. Ha, 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 ha.